Dr. Lisandro Elias and Claudio to give us his lecture entitled The Red Aquino, Ninoy and the Communist Party. Dr. Lisandro Claudio is an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science at Ineo de Manila University. He is also a research associate of the Institute of Philippine Culture, where he co-directs and co-manages the IPCC International Summer School for doctoral researchers on the Philippines. He is the author of the fourth coming book, Taming People Power, Their Revolutions and Their Contradictions, which will be published by the Ateneo de Manila University Press and which will be launched launch this of August, no? uh, September 2013. He is also the Associate Editor of Social Transformations, Journal of the Global South, a publication of the School of Social Sciences of the Ateneo de Manila University. In addition, he is the Editor of the Manila Review. Um, he graduated from the Ateneo de Manila University um, uh, in 2007 with a degree in AD Communication, magna cum laude, and he was the class valedictorian of batch 2007. He obtained his doctorate in history from the School of Historical and Philosophical Studies of the University of Melbourne in Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I present to you Dr. Lisandro Claudio. <laughs> Maraming salamat po kay Dr. Manchi Kibara, siya kay Dr. Rafael Brion, siya sa kong kayo Steph for inviting me here. Um, I've noticed, I'm going to speak in English, is that okay? I've noticed actually, had I done this talk five years ago, I might have spoken in Tagalog. But you know what I've noticed is that over the five course of five years, my students have increasingly been speaking in English. So, so, so you guys are... You guys are freshmen, right? Some of you are freshmen, third year. Can speak in English. And what I want to talk about is Ninoy Aquino and his relationship with the Communist Party of the Philippines. And when you think about Ninoy Aquino, you usually think about nonviolence, you think of threats of people power, you think of Korea Aquino, who actually fought the CPP NPA. You also, you also think of Noy Noy, who continues to fight the CPP NPA. What I'm most concerned with is actually shattering mythologies or shattering pre preconceived notions of certain people. So if I'm able to show to you that Ninoy Aquino was actually a, not only a huge sympathizer of the CBP NPA, but a crucial person in the development of that organization, then that sort of puts into question certain things about the Ninoy Aquino legacy. Now, if that's a good thing or a bad thing, I leave it up to you. Before I proceed, when we speak of Ninoy Aquino, what, how, what, do you, what do you think of him? What kind of politics did he represent? What kind of politics does the Aquino brand represent? I mean, this is very common until now. You know, Ninoy Aquino won the presidency because he was rep representing a particular kind of, uh, a particular brand of politics. So from your perspective, what kind of brand is the Aquino brand? You know, when you say, you know, I like yellow, I vote for the Liberal Party, you know, I am part of the Yellow Army, I love Noy Noy. If he endorses Mar Rojas, I'm going to vote for Mar Rojas also. I'm probably going to vote for Mar Rojas. I mean, if it's a choice between him and Jojo Bina, but that's it's a different discussion. But what kind of politics does Ninoy Aquino represent? Anyone? For the people. For the people. Um, but what kind of politics for the people? It's popular democracy. Popular democracy. And communism, on the other hand, is about totalitarianism or has a legacy related to... Aquino was not a member of the party. Sorry? Aquino was not a member of the party. Oh, no, he wasn't. But I... Well, we will get into a discussion of that. So, whereas the Communist Party, in contrast, represents right totalitarianism, 
violence, etc., etc. And as the previous lecture showed, um, you know, when we remember Aquino, we remember nonviolence, we remember ETS, etc., etc. And these th these two things seem to be polar opposites. But this is a view of history that sort of telescopes how we view the polarization of policy, politics today and telescopes it to the martial of period. What I want to show today is that those binaries, those differences, did not necessarily exist at that time. What I mean by binary is simply just that the dichotomy, the division, it's a fancy term, but it's really just very simple, the duality. How did I stumble upon, how did I start researching you know, Aquino's relationship with the Communist Party? Well, does anybody know where this is? This is Hacienda Luisita. Do you know what they're farming there? Tubo. That, tubuhan po yan. So that's a sugar cane field in Hacienda Luisita. So for my doctoral dissertation in the University of Melbourne, I was doing field work in Hacienda Luisita, and I talked to farmers there. And if you talk to them about martial law history, every single one of them will tell you that there were rumors that Ninoy Aquino was, a, was, was, if not a member, then an ally of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Rumors lang ito. Okay? Now, if you're a historian, what do you want to do when you hear rumors? Especially rumors as juicy as that. What do you want to do? You want to try to verify them, investigate them. Especially if these rumors are mentioned by every single one you interviewed. Sir, hindi po namin sigurado, pero meron po talagang balibalita dito na nagtatago ang mga NPA dito sa tubuhan dahil po kakampi sila ni Ninoy Aquino. Very juicy, right? So I did that. So I started investigating. These are just more pictures of Hacienda and Luisita. These are the accidents of historical scholarship. So this wasn't really part of my dissertation, but since everybody in Hacienda and Luisita was mentioning it, I thought, why not give it a try? Let's see where I go. And um, this was around 2010, 2009. I was also doing investigative reports for GMA News. So I asked the GMA News people, can I do this for you? So how is Severino, my editor, that said, 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 go ahead. You know, investigate this and see what you come up with. So what did I come up with? Well, there were certain things I knew already. Like, for example, that Ninoy Aquino was not a virulent anti-communist. I knew that from, from other scholarly sources that there were rumors that it was Ninoy Aquino had introduced Commander Dante, the founding uh, Commander General of the NPA, to Jose Maria Sison, the chairman of the CPP. But of course, I had to validate these things. And one of the first documents that I discovered was a document in the Philippine Radical Papers in the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Um, the Philippine Radical Papers is a very interesting archival collection because the Philippine Radical Papers is a collection of activist documents from starting from the 1950s until the 1980s, the collapse of Marcos. I just want to tell you a brief story about that, that archive. It really speaks to the heroism of librarians. So during the Marcos period, most of the documents were illegal. Documents of the activist movements were illegal. So what the activists would do was they would enter the main library in the University of the Philippines, leave some of those documents there. Kunwari, makatulog sila. Pag, pag bango nila, may dokumento na, na, na nandun. Illegal document. And what the librarians in the University of the Philippines is for the decades of martial law, he started collecting those documents documents until they accumulated a you know a significant collection of radical documents and nobody knew that it was there until the collapse of Marcos. When they went, when, when Marcos collapsed, the librarians suddenly said, you know, we've been collecting our archives or documents all these years. And so they, there's, they have a wonderful collection there. It's all in microfilm. If you can look at it, have a look. And this was the first document I found. It was a document from a certain Estelita Sumat, who claimed to be a resident of Hacienda Luisita, whose husband was killed in Hacienda Luisita for protesting against the Kuwampo family, the Kuwampo family which Ninoy Aquino had married into. And very interesting, she's spinning the blame on Ninoy Aquino. So let me just read the document. Uh, we, uh, an excerpt from the document. We have waited 10 long years for justice. Before martial law, nobody would testify against Mr. Aquino because of his power and influence as a politician. This is a translation. Um, this was in Tagalog. I regained my hopes to attain justice when Mr. Aquino was arrested. Now Mr. Aquino and his family are seeking sympathy for his case. Remember, Nino is in jail at this time. Um, all I can say is, 
I hope there will also be a modicum of sympathy for our family. Mr. Aquino and his in-laws, the Kuanko family, are wealthy. They can always use money to deal with their problems. We are poor and will always be poor because many years ago, my husband, the only breadwinner in our family, was killed by Mr. Aquino's NPA friends. Why? Because apparently, this person was stealing sugar from a Shenda Luisita. Or was a monkey or was a sympathizer of Marcos? Or the sympathizer of Marcos. I don't know. So we have to again. We have to verify this. But again, enough to pique my curiosity. Enough to pique my curiosity. So I said, the people in Ashenda Luisita are saying there are linkages between Aquino and the NPA. This document says there are linkages in the NPA. There's something there. Let's let's dig even more. Now, was Ninoy Aquino an anti-communist? This one we know that he wasn't, okay? So it's not that far-fetched that he would have some modicum of sympathy for the Communist Party. This is something, these are quotes from Ninoy Aquino to Nick Joaquin. So he said, to me, communism and democracy had been black and white. Communism was, was bad, democracy was good. But when I saw the North Korean prisoners, this was during the time of the, North, of the Korean War, where North Korea invade, invaded South Korea, North Korean prisoners were tortured and yet stuck to their own creed, I began to wonder. So was it really black and white? So you see here, you know, you know, opening up to the possibility of sympathizing with the Communist Party. Here's another quote that he gives to Nick Joaquin. The Filipino is aware of and has enjoyed America's benevolence, but to the rest of Asia, the American looks like the Frenchman, the Britisher, and the Dutchman. I, I originally put sick there in Britisher, but according to one of my editors, apparently that's correct. The word Britisher does exist, so the Britisher and the Dashman. To Asians, these people are the symbols of oppression, and many Asians would prefer communism to Western oppression. So there's an understanding of what the communists represented at the time. Now, what do we know about Ninoy? What else do we know about Ninoy Aquino? Well, he, based on those statements, he was not a virulent anti-communist. He was very close to a lot of the peasants in Ashenda Luisita, lots of allies there. And Ramon Magsaysay, having recognized his closeness to many of the peasants in Central Luzon, designated him as his lead negotiator with the Hook Rebellion. In this picture here is a picture of Ninoy talking to Luis Taruk. Does anybody know who Luis Taruk is? He was the supremo of the Hooks. And he was obviously certainly not a right-winger. You know, he was not a militarist. He was not also a free, a, a free, a, a free marketeer capitalist. He was sympathetic to social security and things like that. So he was progressive. He was a, well, he styled himself a, as a Christian Democrat, although at the forefront of Christian democracy at the time was Raul Manglabos. Um, so if there was a liberal party at the time, he would have been at the left of the liberal party. So again, it's not far-fetched that he would have some sympathy for the Communist Party, but again, we need evidence. So who do you go to? Well, there are two sources you can go to if you want to verify whether or not Ninoy Aquino had allegiances with the communists. Well, one, the communists, and two, the anti-communists. So the communists are, of course, you know, Semari Sison, and the anti-communists are the time where, of course, Marcos, and also the US government. So if you have testimony from both the far left and the far right, people who are opposed to each other, then there's a good chance that your evidence checks out. So, we, so what I did was, I went to the far left first, I went to this man, Tatang Jose Maria Sison, JMS himself, the father of, I can get sarcastic when I talk about him, so I'm not going to talk too much about who he is, but Jose Maria Sison was the founding chairman of the Communist Party, a demagogue, a demagogue by all accounts. Um, okay, now whenever you read anything that Jose Maria Sison writes, there's a lot of double speak, so I need to guide you through it, so let me just unpack what JMS is saying here. He said, he, this is what he told me. Sabi ko, question, straightforward question. Kaalyada niyo ba si Nino Aquino? And this was the answer. Even before the CPP was re-established in 1998, 1968 re-established, it was really founded again, not really re-established because there was an old communist party at the time and he split from that communist party, founded a new communist party, but since he wanted to communicate continuity, he said that it was re-established. Actually, this was a new Maoist Communist Party that was established in 1968, of which he was the chairman. Uh, Ninoy had maintained a certain amount of good relations with the Old People's Army units. Old People's Army units, the Old Hook units, headed by Bernabe Buscaino, Commander, da Commander Dante in Tarlac. Independently, I became friends with Ninoy in late 1967 through his young Senate aide, 
Raul Rojo, who was then my neighbor in Santa Mesa Heights. Ninoy had come to my house, but I was not at home. Raul eventually brought me to 